even the way Allah gave us the gift of His name is to tell us you are dealing with someone like as no one else. He's like nobody else. He will help you like nobody else. He loves you like nobody else. He cares for you like nobody else. He remembers you like nobody else. He's always with you like nobody else. Everyone else will leave you. Everything else will leave you. Allah will never leave you. That's what He reminds you and me of. That's what He reminds you and me of. When you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you're actually asking Allah's help. But human beings need different kinds of help. When you're sick, you need someone to cure you. When you're tired, you need someone to help you. You know, when you're confused, you need something, someone to clarify for you. When you don't know, you need someone to educate you. When you're lost, you need someone to guide you. It's not one kind of help. If you're hungry, you don't need to be educated right now, you need to be fed. It's a different kind of help. So when you ask Allah for help, then at a different occasion, you need a different kind of help. And of course, every one of Allah's names provides a different kind of help. When Allah calls Himself Al-Hadi, the one who guides, then of course the help He will give us that He'll guide us. When He calls Himself the provider, Al-Razaq, Al-Raziq and Al-Razaq, the one who provides over and over again, then obviously he's, in that name, He's going to be giving me provision. When He calls Himself dhul al mateen the one who has extended might, extended power, then I need strength, I'm weak. And I'm going to call on Allah's power to grant me some of that power myself, so I can accomplish what I need to do. So every one of Allah's names gives us a different kind of help. But when I wake up in the morning, and I'm just getting out of bed, and out of my mouth comes Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, just like that, just like that I just say, I don't think about which name do I need right now. Do I need Allah to give me the strength to get up? Do I need Allah to guide me this morning? Do I need Allah to, you know, to help me plan my day? Do I need Allah to provide me halal rizq? Do I need Allah to provide me peace in my family and security? Which name of Allah should I call on? And it is the gift of Allah that by using just the word ism, it is all of the names of Allah, all of the unique qualities of Allah, all of the beautiful things about Allah that you included just inside the word ism, whether you thought of all of those names or not, this is the mercy of Allah. I could not have thought of all of the things that I need from Him. Because I don't need one thing, I need too many things. I'm in too much need. And so I can't even think of all of those names. What he gave us an incomplete statement on purpose. Because what you do next completes it. In the name of Allah, I eat. In the name of Allah, I get out of bed. In the name of Allah, I wash my face. In the name of Allah, I get in my car. Everything you do is actually completing. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is as though this beautiful gift of Allah was waiting to complete everything you do. It's the other way too. Now, and now you know what you understand? There's lazim and malzum. If you do anything without Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it's incomplete. This was a part of it. When we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we're acknowledging something about Allah. That every one of His qualities, everything that He does, is something that's unique to Him. It cannot be confused with anyone else. The way Allah shows mercy, the way Allah guides, the way Allah provides, the way Allah plans, the way Allah does anything that He does is unique to Him, it cannot be compared. That is His unique mark. That's the first thing. But the second thing also is that everything Allah does, whether you understand it and I understand it or not, has beauty in it. Everything Allah does has beauty in it. And that's just inside when we just use, invoke the name Ism. But now let's take this a step further. When we say, in the name of Allah, instead of just saying, you're just mentioning Allah, just calling on Allah, but actually invoking the name of Allah and actually by invoking the name, the uniqueness of Allah and the beauty of all of the qualities of Allah. We're actually, what, like Imam Al-Alusi rahimahullah commented, Al-Ba'u lil isti'ana, that you're asking Allah's help. The old Arabs before Islam, they used to have 10 degrees of love. The lowest of them was hub. The lowest of the degrees of love was hub, and they would have 10 degrees. And the 10th one will kill you. You love someone so much, you become so obsessed that you can't even eat, you can't even sleep, you, you know, it just kills you. It's unhealthy. The ninth one, the ninth one actually is called wala or Allah, from which the word ilah comes. And the word wala means a kind of love that when you have it, you don't feel pain. When you, don't, when you have it, you don't feel hunger. You don't feel sadness. It is taken, it, this love fills your appetite so much, there's no room left for anything else. There's no negative emotion left in your life because this ilah has filled it for you. When we call upon Allah by, calling, by saying Bismillah, we are expressing our love for Allah and acknowledging that if we truly have love for Allah, 
all of our problems are going to feel like nothing. Incredible two names. Ar-Rahman simply means three things. It means that Allah's love and mercy and care is extreme. Mubalagha means it's beyond what you can imagine. It also means, the, so it's extreme, that's the first thing. The second thing is that it's immediate. The second thing is that it's immediate, which means you don't have to wait for it. It's happening right now. And the third of the meanings of when you, when you use fa'lan, that's the scary one, it's actually not permanent. It's extreme, it's immediate, but it's not necessarily permanent. When you say, for example, in Arabic, atshan, atshan means thirsty, thirst is not permanent. When you say jaw'an, jaw'an is extremely hungry, it's extreme, it's immediate, but it's not permanent. When you say ghadban, extremely angry, it's not permanent. Well, for some people it is, but yeah, for most people it's not permanent. You know? But the, the, the beauty of the Arabic language and the beauty of how Allah chose to describe Himself, this is a kind of mubalagha, even if it's temporary, it doesn't go away on its own. If you're thirsty, the thirst will not go away on its own until you use water. If you're hungry, hunger will not go away on its own until you eat food. If Allah is ar-Rahman, if Allah is excessively loving, excessively caring, excessively merciful, that extreme love, mercy, and care will not go away ever until you remove it. Until you don't want it. Allah will never take it away. People don't want it sometimes. Rasulullah one time told the Sahaba, strangest thing, the Sahaba are sitting there, and he looks at them and he says, Kullukum yadkhulul jannah, illa man aba. He said, all of you are going to Jannah, except the one who refused. This like, why, why would, and even the Sahaba asked the same question that came in my head. وَمَنْ يَأْبَى مِنَّا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Who's going to refuse? Why would we refuse to go to Jannah? He says, مَنْ أَطَاعَنِي دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ أَبَانِي فَقَدَبَ مَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدَبَ Whoever obeyed me, Whoever came to me, because he's the, he, he's the Bil Mu'minina Ra'uf Rahim, he's the merciful messenger of Allah. Whoever came to me in obedience wanted to go to Jannah. Whoever forgot about me, disregarded me, he didn't want to go. You and I can remove ourselves from Allah's mercy. Allah will not close the door. We close the door. And sometimes you close the door for many years. Sometimes you close the door for many, many years. And then you open it. And when you open it, Allah doesn't say, why did you close it? Get lost, I don't want you anymore. He doesn't do that. The door remains open. The doors of Allah's mercy and His care and His love remain open. There's a father, or a mother even, and she pours her love out on her child. She takes care of this child even before the child is born. This kid is inside her stomach, causing her pain, you know, destroying her body from within, and all she does is make dua for him. When will you ever find another human being, all you do is cause them pain. Every day goes by, the womb gets heavier and heavier. Now she's throwing up even more and more and more. Food starts tasting like paper. She can't even sit down straight. Her back hurts all the time. She's even hurting when she's sleeping. She has to con... and she's, she's worried about her... and she's hungry all the time because the baby takes all the food. And it doesn't even taste good for her to eat. This creature causes her pain upon pain upon pain. Wahnan ala wahan kama yaqulul Qur'an. Subhanallah. Weakness on top of weakness, burden on top of burden. And yet all she does is her love keeps increasing. Her love doesn't go down, it keeps increasing. It doesn't say, enough already child. I had enough, I've been dealing with you for six months. There's three more months to go. She doesn't do that. Her du'as start increasing. She comes to the imam and says, which surah can I recite so my baby can hear it? You know? And then the baby comes out and almost kills her. Almost kills her. She bleeds almost to death. And instead of, when will you ever have someone that bleeds you? That almost kills you? And the first thing you want to do is take care of them and hug them and feed them. That's your mother. That's what she does. And that's just what she did at birth. What the love that she's given you, the support that she's given you, even when you're an adult, so many of you, there's no one you can talk to and you'll talk to your mother. There's no one who will understand you, your mother will understand you. There's no one who will feel your pain, your mother will feel your pain. That's not just when we were babies, even when you're 50 years old, it doesn't matter. And that mother, Somebody goes to her, the son goes to her and says, Mom, you're so great. You make such good roti. Please help me. And the mother's thinking, that's all I'm good for? I've done nothing else for you but make roti? That's the one thing that came in your mind? All the other sacrifices I made? I took, you know, five different trains and 
three different buses to get a job so you can go to college and all you can thank me is you made roti the other day? That's all that came in your mind? How ungrateful are you? She doesn't say it, but she feels it. She doesn't say it, she still loves you. But you know, you and I, no matter how hard we try, we can never acknowledge the goodness of our mother. We can't do it. If we were to call on Allah with one name, imagine you called on Allah, Ya Razzaq, Bismil Razzaq. You know, I just call on Allah the name of Razzaq, that's it. You know, then Allah is, you're only appreciating what about Allah that He provided for you. But you didn't appreciate that He guides you. You didn't appreciate that He protects you. You didn't appreciate that he, you know, he secures you and gives you good people in your life. You didn't appreciate that He gives you knowledge. He didn't appreciate that He gave you, you made, He made you Muslim. That He gave you your health. That He gave you your job. You didn't appreciate any of those things. You just reduced everything about Allah to one of the things He does. One of them. And Allah kept us from reducing Allah Himself subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's offensive. We wouldn't even know. وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ He taught you what you couldn't have even known. We would have even been praising Allah and it would have been offensive because it's just not enough. So he gave us Bismillah. You know, I go to my teacher for knowledge. You know, I go to my parents for support. And when I'm young, for provision. You know, I go to my spouse for emotional support and love. I go to different people for different things. But to Allah, you go to Him for all things. You go to Him for everything. There's not one thing that is missing when you and I turn to Allah. So that's the first part of the equation, Bismillah. But then Allah didn't stop there. Even actually, I want to share with you some things about the word Allah. The old Arabs before Islam, they used to have 10 degrees of love. The lowest of them was Hub. The lowest of the degrees of love was Hub. And they would have 10 degrees. And the 10th one will kill you. You love someone so much, you become so obsessed that you can't even eat, you can't even sleep, you you know, it just kills you. It's unhealthy. The ninth one, the ninth one actually is called wala or ala, from which the word ilah comes. And the word wala means a kind of love that when you have it, you don't feel pain. When you, don't, when you have it, you don't feel hunger. You don't feel sadness. It is taken, it, this love fills your appetite so much, there's no room left for anything else. There's no negative emotion left in your life because this ilah has filled it for you. When we call upon Allah by, calling, by saying Bismillah, we are expressing our love for Allah and acknowledging that if we truly have love for Allah, all of our problems are going to feel like nothing. We, we all have problems. Some of us have marriage problems. Some of us have problems with our children. Some of us have problems with money. Some of us have problems with health. Some of us have problems with extended family. Friends, we have all kinds of problems. When you call on Allah with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, know that Allah will remove the tension from your head. He'll get rid of it and He will replace it with a, with a reliance on Allah. And everything will get sorted out. Everything will work out. Because you have this gift that came from the heavens. This, this thing you recite and I recite, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is not cheap. It's amazing. You know when it's used in a context? I, I, all of you know it's used in the beginnings of surahs every time. But the one time it's used in the middle is in the story of Sulaiman. Innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ever think about that? Sulaiman alayhi salam is going to transfer the throne of another queen thousands of miles in the blink of an eye. And he says, this is because of bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is what bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim can do. What is Allah teaching you and me? If Allah can do that when someone truly believes in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, then you and I have no reason to be pessimists left. A Muslim is not supposed to be depressed because he has this gift. The last of these names is ar-Rahim. And as I leave you with ar-Rahim, two things I want to share with you. Ar-Rahim actually fills the void of ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahim is a sifa mushabbaha, they say in Arabic, something that is permanent. So don't you worry. Allah will take care of you right now immediately. And if you're worried about tomorrow, He'll take care of you tomorrow too. You know, it's human nature. If, you, if you're really hungry, and your wife says to you, what do you want to eat next week? You say, forget it, woman. What do we have right now? I don't care about next week. I'm starving right now. Once you, start, once you finish eating, and your stomach is full, then you say, so what are you saying about next week? You don't think about the future if you have a problem in the present. Once your present problem is solved, then you start thinking about the future. If you haven't paid the bill yet, then you're only thinking about the bill right now. The moment you pay the bill, you start thinking, what am I going to pay next month's bill? 
You think about the future. What did Allah do? Allah took care of your immediate need when He said Ar-Rahman. And He took care of your future when He said Ar-Rahim. He took care of your future. Both of them. And in the right order. Because human beings, al-ajila. You love to rush. You love the things that you need right now. You're obsessed with them. Doesn't he know who he created? He gave me Ar-Rahman first, then he gave me Ar-Rahim. He gave us an incomplete statement on purpose. Because what you do next completes it. In the name of Allah, I eat. In the name of Allah, I get out of bed. In the name of Allah, I wash my face. In the name of Allah, I get in my car. Everything you do is actually completing Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is as though this beautiful gift of Allah was waiting to complete everything you do. It's the other way too. And now, and now you know what you understand? There's lazim and malzum. If you do anything without Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it's incomplete. This was a part of it. Even in a Muslim community, is it possible our iman goes down? Is it possible that we don't feel as close to Allah in one generation after the next after the next, that we're becoming further and further away from Allah? Is it possible we're becoming more materialistic, more ghafil of Allah, that we don't cry in salat anymore, that we don't feel like we feel like reciting Quran much anymore, our du'as have become empty, we just recite some words and say them, we don't even know what they mean, and we don't even care? Does, is that possible? Is that problem possible? When the community, when a Muslim community, community has that problem, how can they fix it again? How can they get back on track? These are the ayat. These are the ayat. Which means these ayat will be relevant for you and me, not just as a nation, even as a person. Think, forget about the entire country. Forget about the entire ummah. Just think about yourself. Aren't there days where you have become so far from Allah that you need to get back and you don't even know how? Where do you begin? I feel so distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's been so long since I cried in a salah. It's been so long since I felt a connection with Him. How do I feel that connection? So many people ask that question. It is in these ayat that the answer lies. Step one, yatlu alayhim ayatihi. That He recites unto them what? His ayat. We have to engage the word of Allah. We have to recite the word of Allah. We have to stop and think about the word of Allah. We have to think about the fact that every time Allah is speaking, He's talking to me. He's talking to me directly. Wallahi, the greatest gift you will ever, ever have in your life is the gift of Allah's speech. Allah chose to speak to you. Allah chose to speak to me in this book. No other religion gives you this kind of direct access to Allah. That Allah is talking to you and me. But some people say, no, no, no. But Allah is only talking to the Prophet wasallam. He's not talking to me. This is not a book for me. This is a book for the ulama, for the scholars. This is just, I just recited with tajweed, but I'm not supposed to think about it. Fihi dhikrukum Allah says. In it, Allah is talking about you. That's literally what he says. In it is your mention. It's about you. First thing you engage this book. First thing we have to do in every Muslim community in the world, and we have to do it constantly, is revive this sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is that sunnah? Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. Now you tell me. There are millions of us all over the world, in billions even. We get together in Ramadan and we stand and we listen to the Qur'an being recited. But the vast majority of us, the vast majority of us have no idea what just happened.